Hey everybody, I hope you're doing good today. Want to give a quick shout out. We're almost at 16,000 subscribers. It's just unbelievable. That is great. I want to thank all of you for watching my channel. And those of you who have become members to my channel, thank you so much for becoming members. You'll never know what it means to me. Now, a couple weeks ago, I did a review on the Ultimate Lightweight Linux Distro. It was x Lite Linux. And it came with the Enlightenment desktop environment. And I had a lot of people that come in my comments and said, hey, it's a great distro. But then I had some that came in the comments and said, you know what? The Enlightenment desktop's kind of ugly. Well, what we're going to do today is look at a distribution that I think is lighter than x Lite Linux and makes the Enlightenment desktop environment look even better. So let's switch on over to a web page real quick, which is elivecd.org. I'll be sure to link that in the description below. And the distribution we're looking at today is eLive Linux. I covered this one a couple times last year, and I haven't got back to it this year, and I feel kind of bad about it. So I wanted to cover it for you all because it is a really great Linux distribution. Now, if you go to their webpage, it basically says eLive may be the best Linux OS ever made and probably the only distro you'll stay with. The reason it says that is for the simple fact that you can run this on a computer you bought yesterday or you can run it on a computer you bought 15 years ago. It's got 32 and 64 bit availability. Now the 32 bit is what you're gonna download. Let me show you something here real quick. You get the stable version, download now. You can get the 64 bit. Let's go over here. And on the 64-bit version, it asks you to donate to get the 64-bit version. But here is something you can do. It says download cost-free by writing a review. This is what I recommend everybody do. Download the 32-bit version. Take it for a test drive. If it's something you like and something you want to see the 64-bit version of, write something about it. Put it on your Facebook, your, your Mastodon, your Twitter. Write a review about it. Hey, I just tried out the 32-bit version of eLive. It's great. You all need to go check it out. And then what you'll want to do is once you post that, copy that link, come down here and go to download cost free. And what it'll do is it'll open this page up. Just put your name, email, add your article link in and submit it. Give it just a little bit and you'll get an email back from them with a link where you can download the 64 bit version. Now, last year I covered the 32 bit version twice. And when I wanted to do this video, I wanted to get the 64-bit version, so I went over and I linked the two videos that I had done previously about eLive Linux. Well, guess what? Some people out there had already used my links to download themselves a 64-bit copy. So if that's what you're thinking about doing with this one, forget it because I've already submitted it and it won't be usable. That's all I'm saying. You try the 32-bit, you like it, write a little something about it on your social media, just give a shout out to eLive link that, come back over here, and then you can download the 64-bit and be ready to go. Now, we're going to go back over to the home screen. And when you come down, it it basically says, what is eLive? eLive has been around for about 15 years now. It's based on Debian. It's got a solid base, and it uses the Enlightenment desktop environment, which is really, really fast. And what I think is one of the better-looking desktop environments out there. And as you know, with most Linux distros, it's virus protected, cost free, super fast, intuitive. You can run it in live mode. And this one comes with a lot of tools out of the box. What some people might call bloated. What I call is ready to go. One of the things I do not like sometimes is when I install a newer operating system or I switch my daily driver so I can do reviews of it on my channel is that I've got to download all my software again. Distributions like Garuda have made that easy for me because they give me the option at the beginning to go ahead and click on some options that I want right out of the box and it'll install them all at once. And then some are a little more difficult. You got to go in and you've got to download certain things and just do it. it. It gets tedious sometimes. I'm not complaining. It's just one of the things that I don't like when I'm switching distros. And then we can scroll down a little bit further here. Compiz is integrated. Sizes and fonts make it easier for better font rendering than what you're going to get on some other distributions. Stunning, customizable, dynamic. You can get encryption, multimedia, functional. And then there's a little video you can watch right here if you want to. 
They have 2,556 of their own packages. They've got a total of 59,853 packages, which includes the Debian packages, of course. It has been around for 16 years. I'm sorry, I said 15. And then a total of downloads is 2.4 million. And you've got a couple of little reviews down here. Powerful OS, even on slower computers and things like that. Just remember, you've got screenshots up here. You've got docs. You've got your support. You've got a community live chat, source code, bug reports. You can donate to them if you like it. And I'm, I'm recommending if you do like this distribution, please donate. It's the lifeblood of what keeps things like this going out there for us. And remember, download and give the 32-bit a shot. If you like it, write a little something somewhere and post it. Bring that link over here, and then you can download the 64-bit and get to going. What I'm going to do real quick is switch over to the desktop. And if you download eLive, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. It's got a very beautiful wallpaper right out of the box. You have your 12 different desktops over here. You got them in two sets of six. So you can click on this one or you can click on that one and it'll change. And it plays a little sound in the background to let you know that you've changed desktops. And another thing you can do is right click and go to settings. Select your input focus preferences. You've got some quick enlightenment settings you can access right here on the desktop. You've got focus, move and resize, placement, desks, Areas, pagers, menus, tooltips, sounds, group, remember, FX, background, theme, composite, session, or miscellaneous. And when you change, please indicate your preferred window moving and resizing methods. You've got a little voice in the background that kind of wants to help you through. And then you've got FX down here. Please choose your preferences for special effects and advanced features. So you can change these if you want to. And you can also shut the voice off in the background if you want to. I'm going to leave it on because it doesn't really bother me. But there is a lot of different things that you can adjust right here. So I recommend that if you download it and you're taking it for a test drive, please dig into this. There's a lot of customization you can do. I'm just going to scratch the surface with this quick review. So it's something for you to dig into. And if you notice over here, you do have a conky. It'll let you know what your battery is. And when you got it installed on bare metal it'll let you know the temperature of your processor how much memory you're using we're using about 500 megabytes out of three gigabytes i have issued to this machine if i shut that it doesn't drop too much so you're running around 500 megabytes now earlier when i was looking at this i was hovering around 380 390 with nothing open so it is really really light then you've got your top ram usage right here it'll let you know that xorg cairo doc e16 it'll let you know what percentage of your ram it's using enlightenment right now is using about 1.8 percent of your ram cairo docs using about 3.4 and xorg using about 5.9 top processor usage pulse audio and xorg and then down here it kind of shows you your disk activity your network ip address and then of course your disks now I just scrolled on my wheel and that scrolls me through my desktops or I can go over here and pick them the way I want. However I want to do it, I can switch that way. And then you do have your dock down at the bottom. Your applications are all right here. You've got Audacious. You've got shortcuts right here to file system, VBox, home folder, docs, videos. You've got clipboard history, stack. You got your bin right there, pulse audio, your sound how much you have remaining on your battery. E-Live hotkeys, let's open that up. And there are your hotkeys, let's go ahead and move those over. And as you notice, when you do move a window, you do get a sound effect in the background. But you can go through here, this lists a lot of your hotkeys. Now one thing I do like about this, is if you minimize it, it stays right here on your desktop. So that way you could come down here, and let's say you wanted to open your bin up, you could open that up and you still have this open in the background. If you wanted to minimize that, you can minimize that. So you have this that's minimized right here and then you have your bin that is minimized right here. So everything is at a quick click away. You don't have to come all the way back down here to maximize it, it's all right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring hotkeys back up and close it and I'll go ahead and bring that back up and close it. As you can see, it comes with a nice background out of the box. Now, if you right click on the desktop, you have settings right here that we just looked at. You've got your desktop, you've got backgrounds, clean up desktop, go to next desktop, themes. You can change your themes if you want to. You've got maintenance. You can purge your configuration file caches, about enlightenment, restart, or log out. 
Now, one thing I did want to try to find here, let's open this up. I want to check out, we've got memory usage software. How do we install software? Let's go ahead and open that up and take a peek. And we will go ahead and let the software center populate. And it has populated. Let's go ahead and maximize that so everybody can see it. And up here, you've got transmission. I guess you could scroll through these. And then you've got documents, events, GNOME clocks, weather. And then what do you got over here? You've got about software, update preferences, software repositories. So if you're familiar with stores like in Fedora or in Ubuntu, you're gonna be very comfortable here. So that's an easy way to install software. Now, speaking of software, like I said a little earlier, you do have a lot of pre-installed tools out of the box, what some people might call bloat, which I don't. I just like having tools out of the box. Let's go up here and check some things out. On accessories, you've got uh, editors, emulators, you've got VirtualBox installed out of the box. File manager, you've got the Thunar file manager. Let's go ahead and open that up real quick. I do like that classic look. Now, a lot of people will go, that looks like XP. I don't care. I think it looks good still to this day, especially for those who like that retro look, like that throwback look. There are people out there that do like that. And Thunar has got your usual suspects over here. You've got your home folders right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Let's go back up. Accessories, uh, bulk rename, GNOTE, onboard, search monkey, terminology, internet. You've got Google Chrome, Hex Chat, Nicotine, Zoom, Sound. You've got Audacious, Audacity, Mix, Rhythm Box, Sound Juicer, Volume Control. And on graphics, you're going to have Blender, Dark Table, uh, GIMP. Inkscape, MyPaint, Raw Therapy, Shotwell, those are all installed out of the box. Now, I know there are going to be a lot of people that go, hey, why do you need all this? Some people do. Some people want to download an operating system, put it on their system, and not fool with it. They just want to use it. This is for those people. Video, you've got Avid Mux, Cheese, Cinderella. It's got Kodi installed, OBS Studio, SM Player, VLC. Office, you get the uh, LibreOffice suite out of the box. Games. You got adventure games, uh, arcade games, Super Mario War, Taurus Topper, emulators, DOSBox, RetroArch, ZSNES, puzzles. You've got Fury of the Furries, Sokoban. You've got Lutris and Steam, education, web applications, Gapminder, Khan Academy, TED, Video Neat, Vsauce, programming. You got Meld. Inventor, eLive, you've got programming, eLive News, LTrans, Hotkeys, Install eLive. And then, of course, your preferences, customize your color look and things like that. User configuration, administration, you've got HTOP, Conkey, CairoDoc, Bulk Rename, Software, System Monitor, Recent Documents, Recent Things You've Opened. And I guess you could just go up here, right-click, let's go to Settings. And if you wanted to change the background, is the background right here? You could click on the background okay here's where you would change your background and you could scroll through these I guess uh, let's look at that one that is a good looking one I'm gonna apply that one and let's move that out of the way oh I like that I really like that what else do we have now are there more backgrounds or is it just the four they're showing what if we went with that one that one I do like that blue as well but that one right there is still pretty nice. So, and then you've got your theme, composite session, miscellaneous, desks. Please choose how many desktops you would like. You can choose how many desktops you would like. Right now, number of virtual desktops is showing at two. So I guess that's one. That's two. But I got desktops within those desktops. Interesting. If you want something that is definitely different, that's lightweight, that's based on Debian, and the desktop looks a little better than the one I covered two weeks ago on X-Lite. This is definitely the distribution to give a shot to. And we've got this open right here. If we come up here, RAM usage right now is 744 out of the 2.9 gigs. Guys, it runs light. I think it's going to run a lot lighter installed on bare metal for the simple fact that we're not going to have things running in the RAM or in the background. It's going to rely totally on the hardware. I truly believe if this is a desktop that you like, if you've got older hardware and you want to keep it utilized, I think this is definitely a distribution to take a look at, eLive Linux. And like I said, download the 32-bit, take it for a test drive. If you like it, go write something about it. Let people know about it. Share it on social media or whatever you need. And 
copy that link, bring it over, put it in there and download the 64-bit and you're good to go. What do you think of eLive Linux? Is it something you might download, throw on a USB, take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, Thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.